Welcome to an extra special edition of Ronda Pride TV. Tonight, myself and the amazing Tammy Paxton will be interviewing Kieran Bailey. And then Minus and Tammy will be interviewing Alid Lloyd Rees from the online blog series, Just Alid. Oh, there she is. Fabulous, darlings. I'm online. How are we all doing? Keeping well, Kieran, darling. How's it going, all right? It was worth the wait to let me make up. Very well, you sexy <laughs> thing, you. Gorgeous, isn't it? How are we all keeping this fine evening? I feel oh, a bit all good, all good. I feel a bit underdressed now. <laughs> I should have made more of an effort. I, I said I feel a bit underdressed now. I should have made more of an effort. Oh, you come perfectly prepared, <laughs> darling. Well, well, I think you've done a fantastic job. job. I think you've done a fantastic job on The Shining. So Yeah. I should have just a little bit more, uh, more yeah, sheen my, on the head. My wife laughing. would be proud. She's a cleaner. <laughs> yeah. And she'd say, that's got a lovely little sheen on her. There we are. I'm glad <laughs> well, I can say to you and darling, you can come any way which you want with me, lovely. <laughs> I told you, didn't I? I might told you, I'll be careful. <laughs> as long as you hold her, she don't care. Kieran, darling, I want to know a little something. <laughs> yeah. Kieran, darling, I'd like to know, what are you drinking tonight? Me, uh, whiskey probably after this. Boy, I'm on the gin myself. Yeah, on the pink gin. Beautiful, the lovely, the pink gin, which matches my dress perfectly. I do. It does. I know. There's, right. me, there's me with the teenage mutant ninja turtles cup. <laughs> Is the tea in it or something more interesting? No tea. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can, have you can have anything in them in a Zoom meeting. Though, can't you? you know, it could be a professional meeting. You could have a lager in there or. Whiskey That's the fabulous thing about Zoom, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Tammy. Yes, darling. You're late. Our drag queen is never late, darling. You guys were just early. <laughs> we were keen. We were overly keen, darling. I was fashionably on time. As always. Of course, darling. <laughs> take take so a long time to drag or just, isn't it? Huh? It takes a long time to look that gorgeous. I just smashed my face in the makeup box and prayed for the best, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kieran, darling, how have you been finding this uh, last couple of months? Have you been enjoying yourself whilst you've been locked away from the world? I mean, it's been a bit strange, haven't it? You know, I, I, I was supposed to go to Cyprus <coughs> this year to do some uh, some gigs out in Cyprus for a few months. So that was a bit disappointing, not getting to do that, but... I've been doing my um, like live Leslie's thing, you know, playing the piano every week and just taking requests and kind of keeping my hand in with the with the piano and, and stuff and uh, with the piano. Oh, you've been and, doing more stuff yeah, online, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just trying to keep going, really, and you know, keep. Well, that's what us entertainers need to do, darling, isn't it? Ex exactly, you know, because what the other option is just to vegetate and do nothing. So I've been, I've been trying you to be go forceless. crazy otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. Right, James, you, uh, James, Kieran. Yeah. You said you were supposed to be going to Cyprus this year. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you've played musical, music festivals all over the world, I don't know, the USA, Canada, uh, Germany, France, and, of course, home in the UK. Yes, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. festival were you most in awe of? Which one kind of gave you goosebumps? Oh, what do you want to do again? It was probably a, a festival called Night of the Prog in... Uh, in a place called Lorelei in Germany, uh, just on the Rhine, on the River Rhine. Yeah. And I was, I was quite young then. I was about, I don't know, 21, maybe 22. And so only last year then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I can remember it so well. <laughs> yeah. But I had hair, I had everything going on. Uh, I was about three or four stone lighter. <laughs> no, but but um, yeah, that was a great one for me because I was playing drums in a band called Magenta. And... Um, uh, it was just the first time I'd had like all the big light show and, and saw like a a big audience, you know. So I was just like, "This, this is amazing." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that that was just, I think that's the moment when I I remember it being 
you know, big sound, big lights and, and more people than I was used to playing to. And it was just a nice feeling, really. One of your so, first memorable moments then? Yeah, yeah. Kind of made all the hours of practicing worthwhile, you know? <laughs> yeah. Being Absolutely locked away in a brilliant. room. Yeah. Absolutely when, Oh, when you got on that stage, were you like almost, almost, you know, starstruck? Almost like, oh my God, I finally made it. <laughs> it was it was a kind of a little moment like you know oh this this would be great if we could do these gigs all the time you know but then I, I like them all you know I like the intimate gigs as well you know it's there's something about the small room which you obviously can't do at the moment but there's something about a small room where you can connect with everyone as well you know so it's just as well really that I like to win the small gigs as well <laughs> because you know obviously we're, yeah I'm not selling out stadiums be. yeah exactly yeah that's what it's going to be at the moment when you do it, when you are finally allowed back in it and of course like the the new thing is just doing it to a computer screen and you get nothing after it. That's, that was such a strange transition, you know, just to do... It, it's such a strange feeling, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I'm used to standing on stage in front of people, doing a show, telling a joke and hearing the laughter come back and the round of yeah. applause after a song. Exactly. Um, it's, it's very, very surreal. Yeah. It's a and bit you... like radio. When yeah. you're sitting in a radio studio. Yeah. You've got the face for radio, dear. You know that. I have. You? I have. I have said this on many occasions, Dami. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at least, like, you know, if you're, if you're dying on stage or in a club or something, you know, because you're not getting the reaction. When you, when you, when you, when you play the piano in, in the front room and, and you just, and you get nothing back, you think, okay, I know I'm not supposed to get anything back, but how is this going? I've got no idea, you know. Yeah. Am, am I playing the right stuff or are people enjoying themselves? Or I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's such a strange thing, getting no feedback, like you say, you know, off the audience. It's absolutely mad, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Tommy said a little about, you must have been starstruck when you did that first festival that, that made it at home for you. Have you ever been starstruck by somebody famous? Um... <laughs> I suppose, uh, I don't think I've ever actually met anybody famous absolutely face to face. There was a little moment, uh, I was playing in Charlotte Church's band for a while and we did a gig out in uh, Los Angeles in a place called The Troubadour. And yeah. I was a bit naive to The Troubadour, to be honest, and I didn't realise how much of a legendary place it was until we yeah. actually got to sound check. And I was reading some of the, the historical articles you know from old newspapers on the wall and I realized it was where like Elton John did his first uh, gig in America where he got noticed and and where the Guns N' Roses released no oh, first played um what was that album Appetite for Destruction or something the one that made them big and I thought oh my god you know this room has got really stupid history in it you know I was yeah. thinking oh my god we are playing there you know oh, good so I, not, not people but I suppose that that venue was kind of oh I should treasure this, you know, because this is the troubadour. You know? So that was that was quite special, I suppose. So you worked with Charlotte Church for a bit then. What were the after parties like? They were great in Los Angeles. We had um, we had about four days in Los Angeles and we only had one gig. So it was <laughs> the first three nights were fantastic. <laughs> so yeah. what's she like? Is she a lightweight or can she drink you under the table? She can drink me under the table, yeah. Oh, well, scary. I was yeah. Charlotte and Z. Yeah, she's, she's amazing. She's so much fun. You know, it was, it was such a good laugh, you know, to her. I've yeah. never been out drinking with Charlotte. I've been out with her auntie a few times. Oh, yeah. Her auntie's uh, a singer as well. Caroline, is it? Caroline? Is it? Is that her name? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I remember. You're all in yeah. good company by you, you know? <laughs> so, what's been your most embarrassing moment ever, Kieran? My most embarrassing moment. Uh, I don't know really. Um, oh, there was there was one quite recently actually. Uh, it, was, it probably doesn't sound that bad, but we were doing a, a musical called uh, "Eye of the Storm" last year, and uh, just before the second half, uh, the curtain goes up, and I, and then we get the nod from the stage manager. He just gives a signal like this. I cut my hand like this, and just says, you know, go on stage. So uh, me and my friend Barney, who was the musical director at the time, he, um, it was always a lot of messing about, you know, saying, oh, someone said go to me, and just to try to get you on stage when you're not supposed to. So the audience are chatting away as they do in the interval. And then uh, the, uh, the guy from, uh, the, the stage manager goes, uh, 
hold on a minute, we're not going up yet, there's been a delay, but he saw his hand go like this. Oh, me and Barney just walk on stage, sit down behind our instruments, we look around and it's like, nobody else is on stage. Audience goes completely silent. And then they, we've got to sit there for like, I think it might have been 10 minutes, or, but it felt like 10 minutes, it was probably closer to five. But we're sitting on stage, the audience is silent, waiting for something to happen, and we're just like, oops. You know, was, <laughs> and thinking, we're both thinking, is it worse if we walk back off, you know, and make it obvious that that was a mistake, or should we just stick to our guns and stay there? So yeah, we did. <laughs> I'll stick to your guns. You should have told a joke when you were there as well. To be yeah, honest, you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that was pretty bad. Oh, you could have just stood up and gone, ladies and gentlemen, this is all planned, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you could have pulled the Tommy. I just wanted that safety curtain to come down, you know, just hide me away for, for two minutes. <laughs> so of all the different musical pieces that you've done, because you've done quite a bit of theatre, haven't you? Yeah, quite a bit over the years. What's your favourite piece you've done? It probably... Um, a show called The White Feather, because it, uh, it was about World War I. And I always used to get the, um, the because I played drums and, and a bit of piano as well, I, I only ever had smaller parts really, but I, I used to get a lot of comedy parts, which I love doing. But this White Feather one was the first time I got to do a, like a serious role and as a, a soldier in the trenches, you know, so that was a bit different to, you know, draw on those harder emotions, you know, the, the of, of obviously life in the trenches and, you know. Yeah. So that was, it's interesting to explore those, I want to say like serious emotions then rather than the, the comic relief then, you know, of, yeah. of the show. So that was interesting and like I say, different for me. So what, what can our viewers look forward to from you in the future now coming up? What have we got uh, apart from no gigging in Cyprus? Yeah, so hopefully I'll be back in Cyprus next year. So, but uh, in the meantime, uh, we're doing uh, a play called The Arandora Star at the moment, which was supposed to be done live. But I think the, the, the theatre company, Theatre Nanog, are now doing it as a, a radio play. And we might be doing a couple of different other radio plays um, off the back of it. And um, I was, uh, another thing that's been cancelled again, I was, we, were we were supposed to do um, Miracle on 34th Street as a, a live radio play in front of a live audience. Uh, that was supposed to be touring uh, Wales. Yeah, uh, so, so I'm just hoping really that everything that was, I was supposed to do this year just, just gets moved to next year, you know, rather, yeah. than, rather than just lose everything. So, I hope so, because this Miracle on 34th Street, right, what's that leading on from the It's a Wonderful Life, is it? Yeah, we did it. Yeah, it's a wonderful life. Last year, we did that as like a, a radio, yeah. like a nineteen twenties or thirties radio play. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it would have been the same concept. I would be doing lots of sound effects, you know, live. Not, not no no computers, obviously, because it's um, set in at the period. And uh, it's yeah, it was really interesting, you know, doing all all the live sound effects and playing yeah. different characters. And yeah, it was, did it was you great. do what they did on the original film? Did you have cornflakes crunched up? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all, all that stuff. Yeah, cornflakes. And um, I got a car horn, you know, like a... <laughs> I had yeah. cornflakes earlier on. Yeah. I put Baileys on them. It was nice. I'm going to run out of milk. What do you expect? <laughs> oh, no, see, that doesn't surprise me at all, Tammy. It doesn't surprise me at all. I'm a kid and I didn't have any milk in the first place. <laughs> yeah, I don't, think, I don't think you have milk in you. What else do you, Tammy? No, uh, what's milk? <laughs> Why have milk when you have Bailey's? <laughs> Absolutely mad. So you're going to be doing more radio plays, hopefully, then? Yeah, I hope that just like that slot will just move now till next Christmas. Obviously, you've got to do it at Christmas time because it is a Christmas play. Like, you know, so. I don't know. Christmas in July is always good. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm up for it. <laughs> uh, I'm loving Christmas in July. Yeah. yeah. I can have Christmas anywhere you want, darling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Please, Tommy, come on. Go show us what you got for Christmas then, Tommy. Tell us what you're doing for Christmas. No. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Tom, is there anything else you wanted to ask, Liv? Sorry, darling. Is there anything else you needed to ask, Kieran? Uh, yes, dear. There's plenty I would love to ask you. Are you single? <laughs> 
Uh, that's a bit of a, yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a story here. Yeah. <laughs> kind of single. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go with single for now. <laughs> See what single happens. for now. <laughs> For now, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to be mine before you know it. <laughs> That's it. Tommy's, Tommy's on the prowl now, Kieran. God help him. <laughs> okay, what I want to know, Kieran, darling, is over the next few months, where can we find you? Uh, well, uh, in, in this room or, you know, <laughs> one very similar to it. Doing, doing, um, luckily, the, the theatre companies that I, I was working for have kept me on and, um, you know, so I'm, I'm doing as much as we possibly can over Zoom, just trying to rehearse and hopefully, you know, when things get better, we can, we can go back out and do the live performances. But I'll be doing uh, every Wednesday for the foreseeable future. I'm going to be doing my, uh, my slots at six o'clock just um, on Facebook Live, you know, just doing my piano bar thing. And... Yeah, just is there, like, a little, is there a little link for that that can go down below? Uh, yeah, I, I I normally just post it up every every Wednesday at six. I'll post it on my uh, Facebook page and my music page, Kieran Bailey Music. I'll copy it to that, and if anybody wants to join in and ask me for a song or whatever, just let me know, and I'll I'll try my best. I will promote you as well, darling. Uh, I'm sure Kieran Bailey sure on the prize will have it on there as well. Just down below. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. You've been absolutely amazing, Kieran. Thanks for Thank having you me. So much for tonight. It's, you, I tell you what, you've been the hell of a boy, and you've put up with some <laughs> some uh, asshole off our Tammy, but they haven't Tam. I behaved myself tonight, dear. Uh, I yeah, think she okay. has. I think she's been very well behaved this evening. She has been well behaved. <laughs> quite mild for Tammy. She must have only had half a bottle. She needs another bowl of cold flakes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> half, half a bottle. There oh, that's what it is. She haven't finished it yet, man. <laughs> well, there's about, I would say, half a glass. Ah, oh, you, you manage it. We should have done the interview half an hour later, Kieran. Yeah. I'll finish it before the night, so. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I have no doubt about that at all, Tommy. And you said you're going to go for a whiskey, didn't you, Kieran? Yeah, whiskey with ice, I think, for me tonight. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah. Fab. Right, thank well, you so much for joining us. And best of luck with all of your endeavours, darling. Thank you very much. Hopefully see you soon. It's been absolutely amazing. Ta-ra, All the best. Ta-ra, ta-ra. Ta -ra. For now, ta -ra. darling. <laughs> right, here is local legend Kieran Bailey with some music for you, especially for us here at Ronda Pride. Thank you very much, Kieran. This is a song I wrote in my head when I was walking around New Orleans five years ago. Uh, this is a song called Do What You Can, and it's all about just doing everything you can while you're still young enough to do it, and before something ridiculous like coronavirus stops you doing anything. So uh, it's quite, quite meaningful at the moment, this one. It's got my best effort of uh, a New Orleans piano, which I can muster. So, uh, yeah, apologies to everybody in New Orleans who... Uh, plays piano <laughs> just better than this. But this is a song called Do What You Can by me. Here we go. If I make a mistake, anyway, you don't know because I wrote it, so it might be intentional. Who knows? Street. 
someone's gonna tell me that's a cliche and it's nothing new. But let me tell you, my friend, it's still new if it's new to you. So just you take your chance after all, you've got nothing to lose. And just do what you can while you can, and you still can do. You're very good, thank you. Oh, internet is a nightmare. Oh, you're telling me, love. What are you drinking ah. tonight, Alad? You are, sorry, love. What are you drinking tonight, love? Gin and tonic, darling. Oh, I'm on the pink stuff too, love. Oh, pink. You're too classy, love. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know, I I'm a new pork girl. It's a classy hooker, me. I ain't wearing no knickers at the minute either. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of time going anyway, love. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's um, busy because of work, but it's a good thing, Jimmy. You know I mean? It's really good to keep myself busy and occupied with random stuff. Oh, crack so, can, can you tell us a bit more about your work? The work is the, um, with the theatre YOLO. YOLO, yeah, theatre YOLO. Um, we are basically a uh, theatre, uh, well, a theatre that creates a uh, theatre production company, I should say, that creates theatre for young people and children across Wales. And, uh, but we also take our shows uh, across the UK and we do some international work as well. So, uh, yeah, it's just um, giving children an opportunity to have that sort of amazing theatre experience, but by um, some original work as well. It's not that sort of mass-produced stuff you get from, you know, other companies in the West End, but you get those beautiful kind of local based writers and yeah it's great mm, cracking how'd you get into that then how did i get into it right so basically for the past oh god i the past like 11 12 years i used to work in social housing and i did like 12 years in pr doing social housing and then um i turned 30 and i literally just quit my job one day i literally just had enough <laughs> i just I, <laughs> I, do you know when you get to that moment, you get to that moment and you're just like, oh, really? Is this my life? And I made some really bad life choices, darling. I said, that's an early midlife crisis. To be honest, I think I get a midlife crisis on a weekly basis these days. But 
<laughs> Fantastic. Oh dear. So like during lockdown, oh so yeah. you didn't so you were you were working with the social housing company. Now how did you get into the theatre? So basically, I've I've been a performer for most of my life. Um, I've done lots of amateur theatre and I've done semi-professional stuff as well. And it's always been in me. I mean, if you, even if you ask my mother, she just, she'd say like straight away, yeah, he's always been some sort of drama queen. Um, he's always had it in him. And I quit my job. I went to work for a charity for a bit, uh, Age Cymru in Swansea, and a job came up in the Wales Millennium Centre. And yeah, I just grabbed the opportunity and I did a small stint at WMC and then I had uh, this job then at uh, Theatre Yolo and I love it. That's fantastic. It's really nice that um, you can inspire the youth of today and, you know, expose them to, to theatre and the love of music and stage. It's just fantastic. I think that's the key thing, to be honest, for me, is I've always been passionate about theatre, but I think the older I get, the more I'm sort of more interested in the production and creating new work for children to be inspired. Like, I was inspired when... I remember, the, like, the first time I was taken to... Well, it was back then. It was Theatre Esky in Erkenetti. And I just remember, like, what is this place? This is amazing, do you mean? Like... And you just want that child to have every experience possible. And uh, yeah, so the inspired. theatre company um, do a variety on everything. So from being on stage and working behind the scenes, or is it just literally acting and, right. and doing shows? So basically, uh, well, my role within the company is I'm the artistic administrator. So it's like a producer. I do all the tour booking and the, you know, the contracts for the actors and stuff. But most of our shows are, um, we, do, we, you know, people don't always think because we're a youth, uh, we're not youth theatre. We're a theatre that produces shows for young people. So a lot of people do think, oh, they're a children's theatre kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, we don't actually have, you know, Ch ch uh, child performers and stuff. Do you mean it's? Um, but we hire, you know, professional actors, and then we take our shows on tour across Wales. So we're always in different venues. Uh, we work with so many different stage managers and um, producers and directors, and you know, we're always surrounded by creatives. That's great, Adam. I saw on your Twitter that. Uh, during lockdown, um, you've become a connoisseur of the mini sausage. I have. So can you tell us a bit more about this? Can I, can sausage. I just say, I love a good mini sausage. It must be the... I prefer a big sausage myself. Oh, you, I, well, to be honest, I used to, but I think with the history of men I used to date, I think I'm more, you know, towards the mini sausage these days. But, um, yeah, I, do you know what? Shakara. I I bloody love a cocktail sausage. <laughs> and can I just tell you, and I've tried them all, right? And I'll tell you one thing. Tesco's hands down. Hands down. Long and thin it goes right in. When it's thick, that does the trick. Oh, I can imagine of you. <laughs> like, as, like as, the, as to do that lovely one for like three pounds, a big box of them. Yeah, but Asda is nothing compared to Tesco's, trust me. You, you will thank me if you go to Tesco's. You will, thank, you will send me an actual thank you letter. To be honest, if it fits in one hand when it comes to sausages, you can bloody keep it. Oh, I can imagine with you. This must be like a <laughs> sausage down an alleyway. So long as they don't drop my chips, that's all that matters. I, I've seen you on Chippy Lane. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, with me, I'm minus the cock, so i got to get sausage wherever I can. You might as well have mine, the amount of use it gets, uh, minus. <laughs> well, I've had everybody else's. <laughs> well. oh, brilliant. So what's going to be the first thing Sorry, you're going to do after lockdown then, Aled? What's the first thing? Do you know what? I cannot wait to go straight down to the Golden and have a drink. That's I can't... a good old place to go, the Golden. Do you know what? I Cheers can't wait. Cheers to that. I'll drink to that. Cheers to that. 
It's Say thanks to Rob and the staff at the Golden. Catch Ooh. you all down there soon. Can't oh, wait, wait for the start. The fucking lockdown to be over. I'll see the boys and the girls again. Hey! Exactly. Do you know what I mean? And it's, I'm the, uh, well, I've only recently moved to Cardiff. So, do you know what I mean? It's one of those places I've always gone to the Golden. I feel like I'm at home kind of thing. And everyone is so welcoming. And it's just nice, isn't it? Like, the Golden and Mary's. I, I'm, I'm in between both. I quite like Mary's. I'm very fond of it. Golden's more my home, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I go everywhere. Because I don't live in Cardiff, I kind yeah. of live more towards Bristol. I'm like right on the border by the bridge. So when I go to Cardiff, I like to go to every single spot and oh, see yeah. everybody that I know in every single spot. <laughs> oh, you, you bloody tart. You like to go everywhere. <laughs> She's a slut. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get it where I can. God. We need a night out, my nurse. You can show me the ropes. <laughs> Well, hey! hey. <laughs> I'm just heartbroken that Minsky's doesn't have a home anymore. Because that's oh, where I'd end up yeah. on a Saturday night. Yeah, that is Red just... Tip. That's just dreadful, isn't it? Like, a place that's been growing for over, like, was it like 25 years? Um, 25 years? Oh, do you know what I mean? Some of the queens have been there for that long, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Miss Kitty? I worked Kitty? there for five years myself. Yeah, I worked in Minsky's for five years myself on the door, rattling the buckets and doing the keychains and um, welcoming all the guests into the venue. It was so much fun. So, so, so much fun. So sad, but yeah, hopefully, well, you never know if something else might come, but I doubt it. We still got our memories, though. Exactly. So, um, you've been involved in a lot of prides over the years. And oh. I was wondering, out of all the prides, what's your most memorable moment and which pride was it at? Oh, that's a good one because, oh, I, I used to be on the pride committee in Cardiff. Uh, I did a short stint there um, as their PR, head of PR and stuff. But um, because of travelling, it was impossible to get there. I used to live in Carmarthen and then travel to Cardiff just for a meeting. I don't even know how, so I get, how, so how I got home, do you know I mean? It was like a massive blur. But it was such a great time at the, at the time when I was on the committee. Um, I do love Cardiff Pride. I do think um, all Pride Cymru, as we all know it does. But what you know, makes me happy is the fact that these, all these local Prides are popping up as well. Um, you know, like Ronda Pride, Llanelli, Swansea, you name it. It is so lovely. And it, I always used to think, why isn't there a local pride? Why isn't there? And I think, to be honest, now is the time to, you know, have that kind of local pride and that bit of sense of community. But you can also have it when you come to Cardiff as well. So it's like coming home to this mothership, isn't it? Um, but I think one of my favourite prides was last, well, it's going to be, it's going to be last, was it last year? Where I was in Pride in Cardiff and I performed as Misunderstanding from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert on stage. It was just a dream come true, do you mean? So how did, how did you get to do that? Um, well, I was, um, I've done Priscilla twice now. Uh, I did the uh, Welsh premiere in Portalbert a few years back and then I was recapped then as uh, misunderstanding for another theatre company down in Neath, uh, Neath, uh, Swansea Way. And um, so I just, I, I knew some people on the uh, Pride Committee and I literally just said, you know, can we take part? But while I was away in Mas Palomas Pride, um, they, uh, my lot were performing down in Swansea Pride and a few friends from Cardiff Pride seen them and then approached them saying, would you like to take part in our pride as well. So it was nice for them to have that opportunity um, because a lot of them, a lot of them, fair play to them in the, uh, in the company were straight. Well, straight. And That's um, what they all say. Oh, I know, especially in theatre, darling. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they, they have never been to a pride before and it was a great opportunity for them to take part in it. Yeah, it's such a buzz. It's Pride is just such a great, I love it. A great Absolutely experience love it. if you haven't experienced it before. 
So, Alepe, what's yeah. your dream role? What do you really, really want to do? Ooh. If you could do any role whatsoever, what would it be? Well, to be honest, I, I've always loved acting and theatre, so I'm so cliché. It would probably be something like Les Mis or something like that, so one of the lead roles in Les Mis. Um, yeah. I know the only thing, you know, what makes me laugh is, you know, working in the arts, you realize actors aren't really, you know, they don't get paid that much and the work is really, really hard. So if I was to be an actor, I'd want to be one that's really, really good and working continuously. <laughs> Do you know I mean, I hate not working at all. That's the only downside to this COVID thing. Oh, I know. But luckily, but I'm what? working. So what's your plans for after COVID for work? Oh, prob well, that's the only problem at the moment. We don't know, like, what's happening with the theatres. We don't know anything that's really going on. Um, but we've got loads of projects on in work um, that we want to start establishing for children and stuff. And, yeah, we've got plenty to keep up, uh, ourselves occupied because we've, we've had to reschedule everything this year for next year. So what have we got to look forward to then, Alec? Well, have you got children? <laughs> <laughs> Never going to happen. You're missing out already, Tammy. Yeah, please. Never going to happen. Please come, to one of the shows in in drag. please come to one of the shows dressed in drag. The children will not know what hit them. I'll tell you what, yes, I'll do some definitely. other story. <laughs> yeah, I'll do one of the drag queen story times for them. That'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> Tammy, you've already missed two episodes of what Alad has started. He's started a blog, um, which, can you tell us more, more about that, Alad? Yeah. What about your blog? <laughs> Do you know what? I, I, it's one of those things, you're like, is the lockdown really making me mental and I'm starting to write <laughs> like loads of shit? Um, no, but I've been writing this for years. I mean, I've been on and off writing and it started off as this novel project. I think all of us in our lives have got this internal novel that we want to write. And we were like, yeah, one day, one day I'm going to be a writer, and, you know. And then all of a sudden then it started turning into a one man play. And I was like, should it be a one man play? And then all of a sudden I just decided to buy myself a website and upload um, like segments like as a blog, because technically that's what it is. It's my life in a blog, but my experiences and, you know, little things like how I came out and me not wanting to be gay. And then me meeting my boyfriend and that went to hell. I mean, things started going awry and because of me. And it wasn't because, it was purely because I wasn't accepting me for being who I am. And it's taken years upon years for me to actually accept it. And yeah, I love, do you know, I'm, I'm fucking amazing. <laughs> well, I tell my, I try to tell myself that every day anyway, so. Well, so I think you are. I mean, I've read your blog and I can't wait for the next, for the third bit to come out and follow it. And I was thinking about um, what you said to me what you said earlier about what it should be, whether it should be a book or one man show. I think if you do your blog and then turn it into a one man show mm. and then tour with it and then write a book about the blog and how it turned into a one man show and your experience touring with it, then you've yeah. covered everything. Yeah, that, that's, that, to be honest, I always do things the hard way. And that's probably my, you've probably hit the nail on the head there, but that's probably what I will end up doing. Um, and it's one of those things, I don't really care if anyone's reading it. I don't really care if it's not very good. And stuff. It's just me expressing myself and all the weird, well, I've had some weird experiences and like, being, you know, growing up as a gay man in a small village in Carmarthenshire and, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're literally the talk of a town. Literally the talk of a town. Do you mean, you come out, everybody knows about it and everybody's got their own opinions. And, and you know, I remember when I came out and um, a year after 
I think, oh, there's a couple of months after. That's, I'm giving you a little spoiler now for chapter three. It's basically my dad had a massive heart attack. And the rumor in the village was it was all my fault. So I took that to heart where I, I was being tarnished as the, the eldest son. You know, it, was, it, was always, it should have been you know, front page news. He is the eldest son coming out. His father's had a double heart attack out of shock. And it was just mad. Do you know I mean, you know, the man is amazing. And my dad is such a lad's lad, but he is so amazing. I go, you know, when I used to live back home, I used to go drink in with a man every Friday night with his mates. And we'd be talking about women and chippings and tarmac and cars and... <laughs> and I'd be like, I'd be sitting there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can have a full-on conversation about tarmac if you want. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, amazing. We won't talk about the red tarmac, though. It's a psychopath. Oosh, no, don't you bring that up. My dad will be down here. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's a good way to vent yourself, but it's also a good way to express yourself. And... It's really weird since I started this blog and it's only been a couple of days. I've had a f quite a few views and I've had quite a few uh, young people messaging me about their LGBT issues um, and, you know, their relationship issues with their partners and stuff. Um, but equally, I've had friends message me going, is this your best, you know, because they know who my exes are. And then they start going, oh my God, you've written about so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, but I, you know, it's just my experience i don't mention his name i don't mention anything and the love has gone you know it's that was my first love so what i want to know is there's been a lot of uproar at the moment about jk rowling and her twitter slut and what she's saying about trans people mm. and i'd like to get your feelings on this subject do you know what? This is, and th this is stupid because it's not the first time she said something this ridiculous out, out loud. Do you mean this technically is the second time she's done the same mistake? And why, oh, why say, you know, if that is how you feel, shut up. You know, you've got a massive public um, presence. You're worth X amount of millions, billions, whatever. She's one of the richest people in the UK, or if not the world these days. You know, she's there to inspire people. She made the whole... That's what makes me laugh is she made the whole issue about Dumbledore being gay. Yet she's, she says something stupid like she does about trans people. We are all people. No matter what's between your legs, we're still human beings. So just don't be stupid. Yeah. But it was nice to see that um, Daniel Radcliffe came in and commented. It's nice to see that he sort of promoted his feelings on on trans. Yeah, I think that's, on you know, trans. I think he, he clearly, I, I, I don't know the chap, but he clearly seems a nice chap. And I can imagine, you know, everything he says is real. He comes across quite real, do you know what I mean? Um, but everything sort of JK does is always, you know, she is a keyboard warrior. Everything she does is, you know, it's typing down. You never hear her say what she's thinking. And I think that says a lot about any one of us. Like, you know, we all should be able to say, our, speak our minds publicly. However, all the way, you know, having that consideration for others as well. But if you're in that limelight, why would you say something so ridiculous? Do you know I mean like, yeah, I'd be surprised. It is. I mean, it's just ask it, you know, but I suppose she feels that this is my opinion. This is what I think. And, you know, I'm going to say it. But I mean, have a little, have a filter, you know, and just think about what you're saying. And I just, I'm flabbergasted at it because if you look, at all the Harry Potters, and if you look at the people who she was, the people who she's used, mm. it, as in like actors and actresses, and you know, I mean, it's, it's just. It's very disheartening, really, isn't it? Especially as Harry Potter fans, it's very disheartening to realize that she has these views. And, you know, I can, oh, it would really annoy me now if, if she did write another book and included a trans 
character purely because she's trying to make things up with people. Do, do you know what I mean? That's that kind of blowing smoke up someone's ass kind of stuff. Yeah. No, definitely. I was trying to think whether or not there are characters within the movies, including Fantastic Beasts, because, you know, I love Fantastic Beasts too. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, surely there's got to be a character who is trans. Oh, do you know who I'd love to be trans? To I'd love uh, McGonagall. Professor McGonagall. I... She would be great, plus Professor Sprout, because I love Miriam. I obsess with Miriam, and I think she'd be amazing. Yes, I, you know, when they, when they said to us, um, oh, we're gonna do Ronda Pride TV, who would you like? And I was like, Miriam Margoyles, please. <laughs> Get hold of her, I want to speak to her. <laughs> it, was, it was really weird. I was, in, I was in Australia last year, and I went to Melbourne and I went to see a show, um, oh, The Woman in the Van, and Miriam was in it. And I went downstairs after the show for a drink and who was standing next door to me was Miriam. I have never been oh, so yes. speechless in my entire, I just looked at her and she was like, yeah, you're right, love. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> she's just such, She's just such class. I mean, if you've seen her on Graham Norton's show, yeah. I just, she just cracks me up. <laughs> she, what I like about her is she, she, she's, she's truly honest. And I think, you know, she has got amazing views, considering she's an older woman as well. And an, obviously an older LGBT woman, do you mean? So she knows her stuff. And I've got so much respect for her. I just hope one day she doesn't say something stupid because I couldn't cope. Just because well, she's yeah. older than you doesn't mean she hasn't got it. In fact, the older generation have got it more than anybody, haven't they? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, well, yes, because you know they were at the forefront of making change and you know building acceptance. You know, I just don't understand. There's things in this life that you can't change. Okay, what you can change is your attitude. And what you can change is your knowledge. Mm. You can educate yourself to realize that the first two you cannot change and it doesn't matter because I tell you what, if we were all the same, how boring would this world be? Oh, God. Oh, completely, dear. Oh. Do you know what, though? Minus. We are all the same because there's only one race, dear. Human. Nice. Oh, you, you, you're like some sort of wisdom then. It was, it was listening to the words of wisdom coming out of your mouth. It was beautiful. I had my moments. <laughs> She's got it written that down on the paper. <laughs> you, you've clearly so, read this. <laughs> now that was off the cuff, babe. <laughs> so what can we expect from you in the new in the near future, as well as the blog? God knows, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I really want to get back doing a lot more work with uh, Pride and um, obviously my work with theatre, I just love it. Um, who knows? I, 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 to be honest, I live each day like it's the last and I like to make sure that I'm enjoying myself, I'm happy, I've done the whole, like, bad, you know, working with bad people. I cut negativity out and all that stuff. I always surround myself in beautiful positivity. Um, and yeah, I think that is the key for my life to forward. So yeah. And Alan, if, if our viewers want to find your blog and want to find out more about you, what handles can they use to find you? Yeah, they can go to my website, which is justalid.com. It's called justalid.com because it is just me. However, I'm a big Will and Grace fan and just Jack. Um, so I, am, I want to photo me just just Alid. So that, there's that. There's also my, um, <coughs> my Instagram, which is uh, just Alid. And uh, my Twitter is Alid Lloyd Reese, which is, yeah, my, my full name. I like to use my full name, do you know what I mean? I like the name of your blog because at the same time, just because it's, 
it's just a lad, and it sounds like just a lad. Yeah, it's, no, oh, you're just a lad. I didn't knew your that. story. I, My, minus, I did not think of that. That is lovely. Just a lad. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alan, thank you. On behalf of Rhonda Pride, thank you so much for joining us. It's been You're an right, absolute guest. I tell you, when lockdown is done, I definitely am going to be messaging you saying, Golden Cross tonight, drink, let's go. I will be there. Fantastic. I'll just drink right now, dear. Sending you much love and... Cheers, darling. Yes, cheers to that. Lots and of love. You cheers. know, at the moment, our pride, our pride hasn't been cancelled as of yet. So we really hope to see you there. You got my support and anything I can do to help, just give me a shout. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care, guys. You have a good Bye. evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, so I'm Aled Lloyd Reefs, and you've probably just watched my interview with uh, Rhonda uh, Pride TV, which is an amazing organization, by the way, and I think what they're doing online and stuff is fantastic, and especially with Magnus de Cox, but he is amazing. Love him, love the chair, love the pom poms. Um, but they got in contact with me because I also sing, and they've asked me to do a song for you guys. Um, I normally sing musical theatre stuff, um, I've, and also I've just moved into a new apartment, so I'm trying to keep the noise down, uh, not to piss off the neighbours. Um, but I was thinking, what can I sing? Um, I don't want to do musical theatre today, I don't feel like it. Um, I want to sing something that means a lot to me, and a song that I always sing on my own, in my own version. Um, because it speaks from the heart. Um, so this is my version, and it's going to be an a cappella because I haven't got any music for it. So if anyone wants to write music for me, that's great. Um, so this is Calaman, my version. <laughs> I will nach der Leinwand, go the noise, am Kalon Hapis, Kalon Ones, Kalon Lan, Kalon Lan, my count on your knee. Tiga hiu, nar de lit los, dimon kalon, lan gani, kanir di, kanir nos, kalon lan, mein chanda yoni. Tiga hiu, nar ne lit los, dimon kalon, lan gani, kanir di, a kanir nos. A big Rhonda Pride thank you to the gorgeous Kieran Bailey and Alid Lloyd Reese. Please check out the Just Alid blog at justalid.com and don't forget to keep your eyes peeled for Kieran Bailey gigging at the venue near you, as we said earlier, when we're actually allowed live entertainment. One more thing, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, trans rights are actively threatened in the UK. Please, please, please email your MP, especially Liz Truss, the Equalities Minister on elizabeth.trust.mp.parliament.uk. That's elizabeth.trust.mp.parliament.uk. And tell them that you support your trans friends. Hashtag trans rights are human rights, ladies and gentlemen. Get on social media and make a difference. I've been Tammy Paxton.
Don't and don't forget, the more noise we make about our Tammy, the more they're going to have to sit up and listen to us. Definitely, 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 Tina. I agree with you 100%. So everybody I... get on all social media platforms. Anything you can. Start shouting. To make a difference. I've been Tina Mountjoy and she's been Tammy Paxton and we will see you next week for more Rhonda Pride TV.